Hey guys, welcome back to Aussie Wristwatch while I just get comfy in my chair. I'm Jessica and this is part two of my series on dive watches. Now before we get cracking, do me a favor, subscribe, hit the like button, do all those things that help me with the algorithm to keep this channel going. Uh, if you're returning, thank you. Always comment, leave me a note, whatever. I love to chat. Uh, let's roll the intro. <laughs> So this is part two of my, I think, five part series on dive watches, my not comprehensive, but very long list. Today, we're gonna to cover off on some watches between the 1,000 and 3,000, Australian dollar mark. So let's just get straight into it, shall we? Because I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say about this list uh, and whether you agree, disagree, or have some other ideas for something. So let's start with a classic. Let's start with the Casio G-Shock Frogman GWF 1000-1 and that comes in at 1000 Australian dollars. The Casio Frogman is the only digital watch on the list that I'm going to give you guys because it's it's basically got cap capabilities that no other watch on this list has and that's by virtue of the fact that it's a digital watch too. So it's got a 10 record log date memory, high speed tide graph, high accuracy moon data, plus many other features. It's basically like I've got a G-Shock and it does all this stuff like measuring tide and I mean it is so complicated. I don't even know how to change the fucking time on that watch. Like I have to watch about 10 YouTube videos every time the battery runs out or I change time zones and I need to, it just, it does my head in. That's probably why the G-Shock isn't my favorite watch, but I can appreciate why it's such a cool watch. It's got solar capabilities, this particular watch, and it's water resistant to 200 meters. So for a thousand bucks, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. And if you're more technologically minded and astute than I am, well, chances are you're gonna figure out how to change the time a lot easier than I am. So it might be a good buy for you. Okay, next one. And I see these a lot. Now that I'm getting into watches properly and learning about them, I've seen this watch, um, not out and about, to be honest with you, but online everywhere. And it's the Doxa. And this one's the Doxa Sub 200 aqua marine and it's about 1450 australian dollars now it's it's got a tiffany-esque blue dial so it looks really cool it's not really my style in that i'm not really a huge fan of that tiffany-esque blue dial or that whole rage that went on about what was it 12 months ago it feels like 12 months ago it feels but it could be it could be sooner it could be longer i don't know i'm still in a time warp of COVID, right but it's, it's a classic contemporary watch and the Doxa watch just seems to pop up everywhere from a dive watch perspective. So it's 42 millimeters, it's 200 meters water resistant, it's stainless steel and it's very much, um, it's a watch that like Doxa pops up everywhere, like I said, so it's very popular. It's very affordable. It's, they're, they're cool watches overall. Like, so sure, I've just talked about the Tiffany dial and, you know, I could take or leave it, but there are many other Doxel watches out there that I've seen that are super cool. I think there's one I've seen where it's orange. I probably never have an orange watch because I might get sick of that really quickly, but it does look cool. Um, it's very ostentatious. So if you're into that kind of thing, it's perfect. Next up is the Squale Militaire 500 meter diver. It's 1500 bucks. Okay, so this is a serious looking diver's watch and it's Swiss made, uh, but it doesn't come with the Swiss made price tag because like I said, it's about 1500 bucks. It's a thousand US basically. So it's 500 meters. So like I said, most come between two and 300 meters. Uh, this is 500. So this is why I'm saying it's a serious dive watch. This is is a proper dive watch, right? It's got a vintage look, but it's got that kind of everyday wear feel. And um, it, it's, you know, for the price point, Swiss made automatic dive watch 500 meters, that's a lot of bang for your buck. That's why I put on the list. Next one is one of my favorite brands, which I actually don't own, and that's the Hamilton 
Kaki Navy Scuba Automatic 43mm and it's $1400. Now the price for this does vary depending on where you buy it but I've just kind of gone to the higher price point for this based on my research but founded in 1892 in the United States. Um, they've been manufactured in the United States um, up until 1969 and now they're made in Switzerland. Now they're most well known as you know, well as you might not know because I might not have released the video yet but I did, a, I did a field watch video so those guys uh, get a really good bit of airplay in that video because they make one of my favorite field watches which is super cool right. Um, so this is their foray into dive watches and this one in particular is a 300 meter um, Swiss made in-house H10 automatic movement dive watch. So again, exceptionally good bang for your buck uh, in terms of dive watch. I mean, it's not 500 meters like the Squale, but it's, it's a solid watch at that price point. The next one is the Yima and it's the Superman Heritage and it's about 1500 Australian. Now, Yima dates back to the 50s. But this was re-released in the 70s and it's got a locking bezel and they successfully brought back that feature in the more up-to-date version with but they kind of maintain that ultra vintage aesthetic to the watch so it's um, powered by an ETA 2824 and it measures 39 millimeters 14 millimeter thickness and it's in stainless steel so again it's pretty good bang for your buck I just did a video on the Tudor Pelagos 39, which is uh, in titanium for six grand with similar sort of specs in terms of like, you know, um, water resistance and how many meters, things like that. Next one we've got is the Mido Ocean Star Tribute and it's about $1,450, $1,500. Now Mido is, outside of the major brands, as you would know. And it's it's basically inspired by a 60s dive watch. It's 40.5 millimeters stainless steel with a 10 link bracelet. And it's got a clean movement caliber 80 and 80 hour power reserve on the ETA 621. So it's a lot of movement for not a lot of money at the end of the day. And you can pick it up, as I said, for about 1500 Australian, give or take. Next watch, Alpina Sea Strong Diver 300. And you're looking at about whew, uh, $2,300 Australian. Sorry, I'm just reading here and I've forgotten to. Um, <laughs> it's basically 1800 US. So I've just added on an extra 400 bucks for the exchange rate, give or take. But because I actually forgot to do that in my notes. Sorry about that, guys. Now these guys originally made their name with pilot watches and in fact the first half of the 1900s Alpina gained renown as a manufacturer and supplier for time instruments for military pilots. So in addition to their aviation watches they made a strong effort to do a dive watch category. So this particular watch is water resistant to 300 meters. It's extremely legible, leg legible? It's extremely legible underwater and um, They've also made another version which is limited to 300 pieces. So it's, again, it's a pretty solid watch. It's got a great history. You know me, I really fall in love with watches based on their history as well as based on their looks. This kind of ticks both boxes. <laughs> okay, next watch. Uh, and again, I've seen this one a lot online and a lot on Instagram. And it's a Formex and it's the Formex Reef and it's about $2,500 Australian. Okay, so the Formex, the reason the Formex is popular is because it kind of nods to the Patek Philip Nautilus. Now we know how popular that watch is, right? I mean, I would love one of those one day, hello, but I don't have a spare 200 grand. Now, it's made up of more straight lines than a Nautilus and it's 42 millimeters uh, in diameter. So it's not too large and it's offered in a variety of color variants and includes sunburst green, blue, silver, and black. And it comes in a traditional white dial. 
Formex is big on customization, so you can choose dial, bezel color, and strap your bracelet to whatever you prefer. So it's a unique and it's a stylish diver's watch, which offers something a little bit different to most of the others. The Ocean Crawler Core Diver is $1,500, and that's an American micro brand watch company that have been around since about 2017. And they've basically kind of just stayed true to their name, which is, they do ocean watches, or divers watches, I should say, apologies. They blend with this watch traditional kind of dive style and case uh, with a modern sunburst dial, which makes for a really cool pre piece. And it retails for about 1500 bucks and it's 2000 feet water resistant. So it's on the, it's on the more heavy, heavy hitter dive watch spectrum from that point of view in terms of its practicality and usability. Next one, which I hadn't heard of before, so I wanted to put on the list from that point of view is the Smith & Bradley Atlantis Blackfish Automatic. So, whew, that was a mouthful, right? So if you want a blackened out diver, um, under the radar micro band. I think check these guys out because I haven't seen it before. Uh, I, I don't know how anyone's found this watch actually, but it's 44 mil. It's got a sandblasted case black with lime green hands and indices. So that way you can actually see it underwater in the dark. Water resistant 300 meters. It's designed and assembled in the United States of America, which is pretty cool. And as I said, it's about 1500 Aussie. It's about just done, it's just shy of a thousand US. Okay, next swatch apping is the Christopher Ward C60 Trident Pro 600. 600 meters water resistant. Uh, and it's got the MK3 um, movement, sorry. And the C60 is a proper dive watch. It's got a depth rating which can't be beat for that money almost. It's 40 millimeters in stainless steel and it's, as I said, 600 meters water resistant. Uh, it's got a ceramic bezel, stainless steel bracelet and the loom is pretty fantastic. One more, well actually technically I've got two more because I'm gonna count one that's actually $3,000 as well. But the next one is the Longjins Hydro Conquest. Now these guys tend to get a, I don't know if it's a bad rap, but I just don't, they're not really mentioned that often, are they, long jeans? Or long jeans, however you want to pronounce it or are meant to pronounce it. But they're a really beautiful watch. Um, I've got to say, I, I mean, I've been eyeing them off for years. Maybe because they're at a slightly different price point, you know, sim closer to what I, I guess I used to be able to play in or used to play in. Um, but this one is not really the vintage kind of dive. It's got a very modern look in this, you know, and it's inspired by sea vintage, but with a modern look. So um, it's an older Swiss brand producing something new and original, and it's, you know, Swiss made 300 meter water resistant that's not gonna break the bank basically at 2,500 bucks. Check it out. I think it's a really classy watch to be honest with you. I, I quite liked it. Last one. I really like this one. Monta Ocean King, 3,000 bucks. 304 meters water resistant. So found in 2016, Monta is an American micro band based in, is it St. Louis, Missouri, or is it St. Louis, Missouri? I would like an American to just tell me that once and for all, because I'm just trying to think, is it, meet me in St. Louis? Bang, 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 went the trolley. Ding, 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 went the bell. I think so, but I don't know, anyway. I digress. They, these guys focus on Swiss made quality timepieces. So, uh, takes a design, oh yeah, takes a design cue from Rolex and Omega. Uh, and it looks super classy. I've seen these around like, again, predominantly on Instagram and places like that. I haven't, I don't think I've ever seen one in the flesh here, but uh, hopefully on my adventures in a couple of weeks to the States, someone might be wearing one somewhere and I can take a much better look at it or it might actually be in a store somewhere, I don't know. But it, it looks, these watches are really nice and they're super classy and they're way more affordable than a Rolex or an Omega. So this one in particular, like I said, 304 meters water resistant. It runs on a Monte Caliber M22 movement. 
I, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at that one a bit more because I've been keeping my eye on that brand a little bit. Uh, I think I'm not gonna remember the name of the podcast, but there's a lady on Instagram that I follow who's, who's a photographer, phenomenal photographer, and she has like, well, she had, I think they just stopped doing it, a um, a watch podcast, and it's it's there that I first heard this brand mentioned. That brings me to the end of the uh, somewhat long winded uh, $1,000 to $3,000 watch price bracket. Um, so we'll get onto the next one shortly. But look, that was a long list. I've got them in the uh, descriptions for you so you can keep track of what we're talking about. And I know it's very wordy and that's just how I am. But let me know what you think of that list again. In your view, have I missed anything glaringly obvious to you? Have I got it completely fucking wrong in terms of what I've put on there? Um, you know, perhaps you've got a watch that's a dive watch that's between a thousand and three thousand Australian uh, that you think should be on the list. Let me know. You know, I keep track of all of these. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's. That's part two of the list. We'll get on to part three shortly. But as always, please, if you've enjoyed any part of this video, smash the like button. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I love you guys. I appreciate the support. <laughs> and until next time, have a good one.